Hi there, I'm Amit, Developer Advocate here at Retool. In this video, I wanna show you how you can use Retool's new and improved table component to build a dashboard that lets you get data from any data source, customize it, and then display it in a way that's both functional and intuitive. Let's say that you're a finance admin for a business that uses Stripe to issue business cards to its employees, and you wanna build a dashboard that you can use to keep track of the cards that have been issued, and perform basic administration tasks like activate a card, deactivate a card, issue a new card to an employee, but also keep track of the transactions that have been taking place on these cards. So let's build this dashboard out. All right, so I'm already logged into my Retool account and I have this fresh app uh, ready to go. The first thing we wanna build out is we wanna provide a view for the admin to look at all of the cards that have been issued, which means that we need to get the data from Stripe. Now I've already connected Stripe to my Retool account using the built-in integration that Stripe provides. And let's look at the queries that we would need for this app that I've already written out. So the first thing we will need obviously is getting all the cards uh, from Stripe. We will be using the built-in uh, Stripe integration and I'm gonna point it to issuing slash cards endpoint. Now if I run this query right now, it's gonna call the Stripe API and get the data. So you can see that data is getting returned. Another way that you can actually look at the data that's getting returned by any of these queries is by navigating over to the left panel and then looking at the queries. So all of the queries that we'll write out are available here. The state of the components is also available here. And some of the global variables uh, that you can use are also available here. So this is a great way to navigate and look at all of the uh, objects. So let's uh, navigate into get all cards and within get all cards, we have the data. And then within that, we have another data object. And this is this has all of the data that we are looking for. All right, so now let's drag a table component onto the canvas. Now you will notice that the table component already has a data populated. And this is because it has helpfully set the data source to our query already. Now anything within the curly braces in Retool is evaluated as JavaScript. So this is getting evaluated to get all cards dot data dot data, which is navigating into this object we just looked at. And you can hover over any of these elements to see what uh, those um, values are getting evaluated to. Now that we have the basic data available here, let's actually clean this table a bit. You will notice that there are a few columns that don't have any data. We don't need those in our tables. And you can clean this up by deleting these columns from the column editor. So I'm just going to delete some of the columns that we don't need. All right, so I've deleted a few of the columns that we don't need, and this is a generally a good practice because the table does not need to track all of that. Let's continue cleaning up this table a little bit. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that status is one of the first columns available on the table. Then we want the last four to be the second column. I want the expiration month, and then the expiration year. So you can just drag and drop these columns in the column editor to rearrange them. And let's do the spending controls. Now the reason I've kept the spending controls here is that it's actually an object and the thing that we really want from the spending controls. So let's actually go here and show you. If you go into get all cards and then go into one of the objects and the spending controls has an object called spending limits. Within that, the first element has the key value pair of amount, and that's what we are looking to do. So let's go into spending controls and rename this to spending limit. You can set the source to be the object. In this case, the source is spending controls. And within that, the map value is going to be item, which refers to the, the source object. And then item dot spending limits dot first element dot amount. And that gets us the spending limit. Let's also change the currency. Now, one of the things you will notice is that it does not show the cardholder name by default. Now that is something we definitely want. So to do that, we know that the cardholder name is actually available in the data source. It's just dug up inside the individual object. So we can navigate into this individual dot first name and last name. So what we want to do is we want to add a custom column. A custom column is a great way to do this kind of thing where we will map it to a specific key value pair uh, within an object. Now in this case the object is again going to be cardholder and we will map it to item dot individual dot first name 
and let's copy that because we also want the last name and let's change this to last name so now we have the cardholder name let's go back to the table and make this one of the first columns so now we have the cardholder name coming up let's do one more and show the email address of the customer as well and let's look at this created uh, column this looks weird this needs to be a date so let's change this to a date time now this stripe returns this as a unix timestamp so to accurately display that we can use the built-in moment.js library again curly braces and we can pass it the item and then we'll format it so now we have this in the right format and then let's also make sure that we are sorting the table out by created so you can go into the interaction section and then choose created and we can do this as descending so now it's showing the most recently uh, created card uh, as the first row all right our table is really starting to come together now one more thing i want to do is i don't think we need to display this card holder object so i'm just going to hide it for now the columns that you are absolutely sure you will not need to display in the table it's a good practice to delete them because then the table component doesn't need to track those columns that improves the performance but it also um, helps uh, keep the columns in check uh, they don't get uh, cluttered up. So the next thing we want to add is add some sort of search and filtering so the admins can search for things on the table and the table should automatically filter uh, based on that. So table actually has a built-in way to do that and uh, if you look at the table search term property I can set this to say Zoe and the table is automatically filtering it out by Zoe. We obviously don't want to hard code this. What we want to do instead is we want to drag a text input box over here. And then we will set the search term to the value of that input box. So we can just say text input one dot value. So anything that we type in here, the table automatically filters that out. This works across the board for all columns. So I can even search by the last four of the card number one more thing we will do is we will select the text input and check the show clear button so it's easy to clear up this and the table is automatically filtered again we also have this toolbar at the bottom that you can use for filtering so you can say that only show me columns or, or only show me rows that have the status as inactive oops inactive all right, let's clear up this filter. So it's showing all the records. Now you'll notice that it's showing all of the 94 results in one go. This is fine for now, but if you have hundreds and thousands of records, you obviously don't want this. So to, to tackle this, you can enable pagination uh, for the table. So we'll go into add-ons and click on pagination. You can also choose between client side or server side, and you can also specify the page size. So in this case, let's say we only want to display 20 rows at a time so it automatically creates this pagination of sorts all right so the next thing we want to build is provide a way that the admin can update the status from within the table itself so by default all of the columns are not editable and we can make those editable by just clicking on the three dots next to the column we want to make editable and click on make editable and now I can click on the status and it gives me this drop down. It obviously doesn't have any options right now, but it's editable right now. So to make sure that we show the options, we can go into the status column again. And then you will see that the options list is not set. Let's click on that. There's two ways that you can set the options. One is that you can automatically map it to a query. So if you were getting some distinct values from a SQL query or an API, you could map it to that query or you can do it the manual way. It gives you this helpful message that says that you can add these three options based on the data source. And in our case, these three options are inactive, active, and canceled. You can also set the colors for these. So you can say that I want this to be light green, and that changes the color over here. So now if I come and click here, I will see inactive, active, and canceled as the options. The behavior that we want is that when the admin chooses any of these other options, 
the update query should fire off automatically for us. Now let's look at that update query that we have written. Now you'll notice that the update card status is referencing an object called chain set array within the table. Let's look at that. So whenever you change a record in a table, the table object updates the chain set array with all of the changes. So you can see that the ID was changed to the active status. Now let's change one more and call this active also. So you'll see that another element has been added to the chain set array. So all we need to do is reference this chain set array to make the changes. And the way we want to do this is that when the admin changes the cell, this query should fire off automatically. So to do that, we will go into the status column and we will add an event handler and the event should be change cell. So whenever the cell changes, we want the query update card status to fire off. And we'll try this again now with the query. So we want the we want Zoe's card to be activated. And the update query ran successfully. Now you may have noticed that when we updated the cell for this, the query is updated and the cell is changed, but we still get this pop-up to cancel and save. Now that's because we have a action save action handler set up for the table. Now, since we are updating this on the cell level, we don't really need it for the table level. So we can just X out of that on the add-ons. So now when we update the status, we don't get that pop-up anymore. The next thing we want to do is we want to provide our admin a way to issue a new card to a card holder. So say that a fraud was detected on one of these cards, we have deactivated the card, and now we want to issue a new card to Zoe. So as we click on this, we want a button to be available for each of these rows. To do that, I'm going to go into the action section and add a new action called new card. And we'll give it a nice icon. And then for the action or the query, we want to issue the new card. So now as you hover over this, over the table and each of these rows, you will see a new button called new card. And when we click on this, it's gonna fire off the issue new card query. So let's look at that. Now issue new cards is a post request to issuing slash cards. And then it is setting up some body parameters for the type is virtual. Um, Stripe gives you a few options. You can select from those. This currency is USD. So for the cardholder, it's referencing table one's selected row dot cardholder.id. So again, if you go into and navigate into selected source row, you will see that it's referencing the currently selected row uh, cardholder and dot ID right here. So we are passing that. So as you hover over this and click on any of these, it fires off this query. Let's actually go ahead and do that. Uh, but before we do that, I want to show you one more thing. If you go into the advanced section, you can set up a confirmation message. So you can check this box and you can say something like, are you sure you want to issue a new card too? And again, you can reference the cardholder name. This is a good practice because you want to make sure that uh, you want to give the admin a chance to confirm it. And you want to also give them a chance to make sure that it is getting issued for the person that they expect it to. Let's issue a new card for area. Are you sure you want to issue a new card? Let's say okay. And that should fire off. And again, the table is, is updated automatically. And this is because like we did for the update card status, we included a success trigger to be get all cards dot trigger. And we've also set it to get authorizations dot trigger, but we'll get to that in a bit. Now, one last thing we want to do before we wrap this up is we want to give our admin a way to keep track of the transactions that have been taking place for each of these cards. So the way we want this is that we want to add another table. And as we select um, the card holders in table one, the table two should reflect the transactions uh, for that credit card. So to do that, let's actually add another table. And the data source is automatically mapped to demo data. We want it to go into get authorizations. This is the final query that we have written. Now, the way we want this is, let's look at this query, get authorizations. This is again referencing table one.selectedRow.id. So as I select this, you will see that the ID is getting updated over here. And now if I run this query for Zoe Foster, 
it should get me the data for Zoe Foster. So you can see that there is a few transactions that Zoe uh, has made on this card. So now what we want is as we select this, this data should be available. And let's regenerate this since it was using the demo DB. Uh, and we change the source, we just need to regenerate the columns. Now, one of the things, it obviously has a lot of columns and we can clean this up, but one of the things that we really want to see quickly is I want to add a custom column for merchant data. And this is going to be merchant data object. And then within that, it is going to be item.name. So now we can grab this over here. Let's name this to merchant name. And then finally, the amount is going to be a currency. Let's set the primary key to be ID. And then finally, I want to add one more column to say merchant data. And we'll name this to be merchant category. And that should be item dot category. So now let's grab this also at the top of the table. And these are really the only important ones we want to display. So the ID, the merchant name, and then we can delete all of the other ones. So then if you just cycle through these records, the table on the right gets updated based on those records. All right, that's a wrap for this app. Hope you found this helpful. You can learn more about Retool at retool.com. You can sign up for a free account. And uh, you can also check out the docs with some uh, helpful tutorials, guides, and uh, also check out some of the other products that Retool has, including mobile workflows and database. And uh, happy retooling. Mm -hmm.